This is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to PMNRRecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. All righty, is the Ohio State on the call? I think I see Dr. Bavishi. Yep, we're on the call. So yeah. while David, our recruitment chief, is pulling up the PowerPoint um, presentation, I'll just kind of introduce myself. I'm Sheetal Bavishi. I'm the residency program director for The Ohio State University uh, residency program. I've been program directors um, since 2019, so um, a little over three years. And, um, you know, we're a very old program. We had our first residence in 1953, and we've been around for nearly 70 years. We have seven residents a year, advanced and categorical, and we have a number of sites for rotations for our residents. We have a very well-rounded inpatient and outpatient program. Uh, David will go into a lot of that with us. And one of our big things that we um, are super excited about is that we are going to be uh, getting a brand new rehab hospital uh, built in 20, by 2025. So just in time for new residents to, to come in and be able to, um, you know, enjoy the new facilities. So um, other things about the program and things that, you know, I have as a vision for the program is always improving, improving our curriculum, improving our research, and then improving our overall, you know, um, uh, offerings for our residents from a rotation and standpoint. So we've made a number of changes this year, this past couple of years with new faculty. So we have improvement in our outpatient rotations. Uh, for access to different locations within the OSU system and outside of the OSU system, as well as um, we've increased our research curriculum and had a number of residents um, being able to present at national conferences. Um, and so our residents get quite a, quite a nice stipend of $1,500 to attend the conference if they're presenting a poster or any other presentations. They also, if they hold a leadership position in any national organization, then they get $500 to attend the conference. So really trying to expand our residents' access to attending some of these organizations and conferences. So David, if you're ready, I'll let you take over. Yeah. Um, can you... And I'll, and I'll remain on the chat. So if you guys want to ask questions while David's presenting, I'm happy to answer during the chat. And can you hear me and see my shared screen? Okay. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, um, thanks, Dr. Bavishi, for the introduction. I'm David Coulson. I am our chief resident for recruitment this year, one of the PGY4s. Um, I did my medical school down in Texas at Texas Tech University, but came up here to Ohio for residency. I've been so happy to have made that transition. Um, and so I will go ahead and get started here. There's a lot of slides, so we'll go pretty fast just so you can get um, as much of this information as possible here and leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Uh, overview, you know, we are a pretty established program, ranked in the top quartile, top 20 on Doximity this last year. We do take seven residents a year, three categorical and four advanced, um, meaning that you can either do with your intern year at Ohio State with Ohio State Internal Medicine or advanced with your uh, intern year elsewhere, whether it's an IM prelim or a transitional year. If you do uh, for the categorical position, you don't have a separate internal medicine interview, you only interview with us and you're guaranteed that internal medicine spot uh, if you match into a categorical position. Uh, we have about 32 OSU faculty members, but hiring new faculty all the time, and especially with what Dr. Bavishi mentioned with this new rehab hospital being built, um, expanding a lot in terms of the number of beds that are going to be available. So uh, lots of new opportunity for new faculty members to come in. Uh, we have four week blocks. Each rotation is two blocks, so about eight weeks total. 
this is the cat uh, the categorical prelim schedule. So that first year, if it is, um, if you do do the internal medicine year here, um, you know, a few highlights on here in that elective consult month, lots of time to kind of build your own schedule, things like sports medicine, rheumatology. Um, you do do a month of PM and R included in that three to five uh, months. Um, you can see there MICU is also optional. So if it's something you want more exposure to um, some of those extra sick patients, then you certainly can, but um, entirely optional if it's also not something that you're interested in. So really a pretty good schedule. Uh, maybe more relevant to all of you, rotation schedule for our rehab residents. So you can kind of see here we have in blue our inpatient rotations, in orange our consults, and then in uh, green our outpatient rotations. So heavier on inpatient earlier on, and then as you go, um, you can kind of see no true inpatient rotations in our fourth year. Um, call also decreases as you go uh, throughout this time. We'll talk about that shortly. Um, but really narrowing down to those kind of neuro rehab, uh, you know, foundations in the early years. And then um, as we go getting more into the EMGs and the MSK and um, kind of expanding on that curriculum, but certainly kind of mixed all throughout, you know, when you're on OSU consults and when you're on OSU outpatient, you'll get plenty of MSK and sports exposure kind of built into the curriculum there. Our didactics, we have a 12 month rotating curriculum um, with a MSK course that kind of goes throughout the year and are spurst. Um, our lectures are currently virtual on Zoom every morning from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., so about four days a week um, at 7.30, so, um, you know, not all in necessarily one block, like a Tuesday afternoon or something like that, so um, if you're like me and have trouble paying attention during a four-hour just kind of block of lectures, this is pretty nice because you can wake up, make your cup of coffee for the morning, and tune into lecture, um, and that's really nice. We do have in-person lectures, usually on Thursdays. Um, and those are ultrasound workshops, uh, physical exam workshops, MSK workshops, typically. Um, some also just presentations occasionally will be in person, and those will be kind of sprinkled in throughout the year. You can see our courses listed. Uh, board pass rate, fantastic, 100% over the last five years. Uh, new initiatives, Dr. Bavishi already talked about our new rehab hospital being built that'll be done by 2025. Unfortunately, too late for me as a resident, but in just enough time for you guys as uh, potentially incoming residents. And i um, very excited about that. Like I said, lots of new faculty, um, going to be state of the art and lots of opportunity for resident and faculty input into kind of the design of that space. And um, we're all very excited about that. We have several new faculty members just hired in the last few months. Both of the ones you can see are actually former graduates of uh, our program. Uh, new and kind of revamped diversity and inclusion curriculum led by one of our own faculty, Dr. Talley. We also have a new rotation opportunity that in fourth year um, have additional ele elective time. You can take two to four weeks and go to Oregon with a former OSU alum and former AANEM president, Dr. Grant, um, well-known name in the field. If you're not familiar with him uh, now, you will be in the future, certainly. And um, he he's a name you'll hear a lot. And so um, getting the opportunity to rotate with him up in Oregon is, is uh, fantastic, and several of our residents have taken advantage of that over the past year. Our call schedule, so um, our call is all home call, um, no in-house call, so um, primary, primary kind of call inpatient is covering Dodd Hall, it's about six weekends a year as a PGY2, and then whenever you're at Dodd, it's about one weekday per week, so whenever you're on one of those Dodd blocks, um, your call schedule kind of look like, you know, you might have a Tuesday and then be off for the weekend. And then next week, you might have a Wednesday, be off for the weekend. Next week, you don't have any call during the week, but you will cover that weekend. Um, and that'll kind of rotate throughout the block. So um, we also have call at Children's Hospital, um, a much smaller unit. So it tends to be a much smaller volume of calls. That's also six weeks a year as a PGY2. And then that does decrease as the years go on. So you can see it goes down to two weekends. Uh, as a PGY-3 at Dodd and at Children's. Um, and then as a PGY-4, you have no inpatient call uh, at Dodd. You do have a little bit of admission call, which we'll discuss a little bit shortly. And then holiday call is dispersed between the second and third years. No holiday call is a fourth year. Um, we do have this kind of extra admission call just to help out the primary on-call resident with admissions, usually about 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., just helping with whatever admissions kind of came in that morning, um, and just to kind of help that weekend resident maybe get done with their weekend a little bit earlier and have some time off. Um, that'll be kind of interspersed throughout two, three, and four, um, usually about maybe three weekends a year. And then holiday call is the second year you will cover uh, one major and one minor holiday with major holidays being like Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, uh, but then uh, just admission call, backup call is a third year and no holiday call at all is a fourth year. 
Um, OSU is designated as a uh, model system for traumatic brain injury, model system for spinal cord injury, and a neuro recovery network site. Uh, some highlights of our sports medicine MSK curriculum, uh, Jameson Crane, one of the nation's largest, most comprehensive sports medicine facilities that has in-house ORs. You work extremely closely with orthopedic surgery, work extremely closely with the therapy that is housed uh, right there. So uh, you can, you know, if you have a question about your patient's surgery that you're working on rehabbing and seeing in your clinic, you can just walk down two desks next to you and talk to the orthopedic surgeon. It's a really special uh, kind of experience that way. Um, it does have a built-in motion analysis lab as well that we can spend time in. Um, so we do have, uh, as I mentioned, the dedicated MSK and sports didactic that kind of runs throughout the year. Um, and we do have sideline sports coverage as well. It's optional. So if you're not interested in sports, don't have to do it. Um, but if you are, um, we have high school football whenever that's in season, plenty of wrestling sideline coverage. One of our uh, big sports medicine attendings uh, is a former collegiate wrestler and has stayed really kind of connected to that community. So lots of options there. And then cycling physicals, uh, the Arnold, the big bodybuilding competition that comes to Columbus. So lots of opportunities there if you're interested. Adaptive sports as well. Um, we have plenty of opportunities with one of our PM and R sports faculty kind of coordinates that on a monthly basis. And there are tons of events that our residents have been involved in. Uh, we have an ultrasound curriculum. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've transitioned that to being longitudinal throughout the year. So uh, now every couple of weeks, we'll go in and have an in-person workshop with uh, an ultrasound attending and uh, kind of get to work on different MSK injection sites and things like that um, at our library simula simulation site. We also have a truly world-renowned expert, Dr. Strakowski, one of really the world's leading MSK ultrasound uh, physicians and uh, gets sent cases from all over the country, gives lectures all over the country. And so uh, we rotate with him as a fourth year, but have chances to learn from him all throughout the year. So a really nice opportunity there. Um, we have lots of opportunities with orthobiologics as well. Um, one of our attendings, Dr. Beria, is really on the forefront of orthobiologic research, um, has published several studies on this, has several studies ongoing in this. Um, I know when I was in clinic with him, he was doing probably on average about two PRPs per half day of clinic. And so if uh, PRP or even some, uh, some of the other injections that he will sometimes uh, play around with, you can have a lot of experience with that if you're interested, big into regenerative medicine and those sorts of things. So a uh, great resource there. Uh, you can see some pictures of our various residents over the years working with uh, some of our attendings on injection workshops using uh, cadavers. We have both whole body cadavers and uh, partially dissected cadavers that we can practice injections with at various times throughout the year. Uh, lots of different research uh, that our residents have taken part in. Um, kind of a few examples here. I won't go into all the specifics. I will shout out one of our current residents, Dr. Tawari, who did receive a $40,000 grant for his research into baseline characteristics and how they affect radio frequency ablation outcomes. Um, and so we're all very excited about that. So lots of opportunities if you are into research to uh, even potentially get grant money and, and really kind of take that next step in your research career. Um, in terms of benefits, you can see our salaries uh, on the board here, ranging from uh, 61,000 as a PGY-1 to uh, 67,000 as a PGY-4. Very competitive with uh, the Midwest area and with Columbus being a pretty low cost of living city, um, especially even compared to some other Midwest cities. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic. They've also, you know, and they increase it every year as cost of living increases. So um, Medical dental vision, uh, retirement at OSU is really amazing. Um, OSU will match 14.3% of contributions for retirement. So, um, you know, essentially, although it's down the road, that's just extra money in your pocket. Um, free tuition at OSU for employees. Um, and so, for instance, one of our residents actually utilized that to, uh, during residency, go and get his MBA and taking classes kind of at nighttime and in the meantime. So over the course of about, you know, uh, three years or so, able to get his MBA. Uh, dry cleaning service, discounted and even sometimes free OSU football tickets, which very big deal for those of you into college football. Those games are an absolute blast. Uh, we do have 15 days of vacation annually and then five days to attend conferences separate from vacation days. Uh, as a PGY4, you have five days to take off again separate for interviews and then 15 sick days up staying under 30 total days per year. 
Uh, there is moonlighting available for PGY-4s at the Bureau of Workman's Compensation that pays 150 an hour. It's not direct patient care. It's essentially chart review of different Workman's Comp cases. Um, if you're presenting at a conference with a first offer poster, we'll give you $1,500 to go to that conference, which a lot of our residents take advantage of, um, and especially with how great our faculty are at encouraging uh, research, lots of opportunities to get posters and go to just about every conference you, you want to go to if you're dedicated. Um, you get educational money for books and conferences and um, other such things. So 500 is a PGY-2, up to 1,000 is a PGY-4. And in your first year at OSU, they do give you a free laptop from the Department of GME. A couple of pictures of uh, some of the rec facilities that are available at OSU that are um, available for us to join. So um, if that's something that interests you, really, truly world-class state-of-the-art facilities. There is a resident specific gym on OSU main campus as well, relatively recent, just built a couple years ago. So um, if you're working on campus, you and that's where Don Hall is currently located, um, you have the opportunity to utilize that if you have some downtime. In terms of fellowships that are at OSU, um, we do have in terms of accredited fellowships, interventional pain. Um, it is through the Department of Anesthesia, but they take two residents a year and have really traditionally taken one anesthesia, one PM&R. In the last two years, they've uh, taken a PM&R resident from our own department, so um, that's been great. Uh, pediatric PM&R as well, Nationwide Children's is a fantastic place if you're interested in pediatric PM&R with truly world-class faculty, amazing teachers. Um, and they take one to two fellows a year and have recently taken also uh, OSU PM&R graduates. Uh, there's a family medicine run uh, sports medicine, both at Ohio State and at Grant Medical Center, neuromuscular fellowship through neurology. Uh, two years ago, we started a cancer rehabilitation fellowship through our department. Um, and so we're currently uh, on our second fellow and that's been going great. Um, have had some great fellows so far. Um, and so lots of opportunities there if you're interested in cancer rehab. Uh, recent graduate fellowship matches, you can see on the screen, this is just from our last two classes. So uh, if you kind of do the math, I said we take seven residents a year, and in our last two classes, seven residents match into fellowship. So kind of say about half of our residents end up going into fellowship and half end up doing general rehab without a fellowship. Um, and I think that's a really good balance. I think that's uh, kind of speaks to our residents have all of the opportunities to match to some fantastic programs. Um, you know, University of Colorado, Vanderbilt, all these places, but also feel really well prepared if not going into a fellowship and if they do just want to start practice straight out of residency. Um, I myself am not doing a fellowship and plan to do general rehab after graduating. Uh, a map of our, remaining. Thank you. A map of our rotation site. Um, so a few of them are uh, a little bit out there. You can see in Westerville, but mostly kind of clustered pretty close. Uh, even the one that's the furthest away only takes about 20 minutes to get to. So Columbus is very easy to get to with pretty low traffic, all things considered. A picture of Dodd Hall, our current primary rotation site. Um, this is different buildings kind of throughout that main Wexner Medical Center campus. On the top left there, you can see the James, which is our kind of flagship cancer center. Um, some of our other rotation sites, Nationwide Children's in the top, uh, the two Ohio Health Hospitals, Grant and Riverside in the top right and bottom left, and then the freestanding Mount Carmel Rehab Hospital in the bottom right that you rotate at as a fourth year. Um, some of our outpatient clinic sites, um, that uh, sports medicine center, the Jameson Crane in the bottom right that I had previously mentioned. Um, and then kind of just quickly going through our faculty, several graduates, you know, we have a, a long standing history of, of faculty um, that have, you know, uh, written books and contributed. Uh, you've probably heard, in fact, of Bradham, one of the kind of Bibles of PM&R, if you will. Uh, Dr. Luke, our current chair and kind of paging through our faculty, Dr. Bavishi, you met. I'll skip through some of this for the sake of time. Um, hopefully you'll get to meet some of these folks in the future if you come rotate with us, if you interview with us. Uh, our list of current residents, smiling faces. And we do actually hang out together outside of work. In fact, there was a uh, happy hour earlier today that I stopped by before coming to the Zoom call. So we really do like each other, hang out with each other all the time. We're a very close knit class. Um, Columbus is also an amazing city. I, I don't want to spend too much time because I want to make sure we get to your questions. But as someone who has lived in Texas his whole life before, Coming to Columbus, I am planning to uh, stay in Columbus for my first job. I like it that much. They kind of caught me. So it really is a great place to live. Amazing food, amazing art and music scene. Every artist that you can think of comes to Columbus.
to some point. It's really kind of located centrally in Ohio. Um, like I said, festivals. Uh, the food is fantastic here. I got to get to sports because, of course, OSU Buckeyes, amazing. I have season tickets this year that I was able to get at a big discount for being a resident. Um, we have Clippers, the Blue Jackets. If you're a hockey fan, those games are fun. There's a brand new soccer stadium for the Columbus crew. Um, really just lots of uh, great opportunities to have fun in Columbus. So with that, uh, I can know I kind of rushed through the end, but I want to open it up for questions and see if you guys have anything you want to know. So open the chat. There's a question in the chat about couples matching. Uh, we do um, uh, couples match. Uh, we do offer interviews for couples matching. Uh, we have not had a couples match with us in six years, um, but uh, we do offer interviews on couples matching. Do you feel that there are any unique uh, pathologies or patient populations that you get exposure to at OSU? I would say one of the big ones uh, is, is really cancer patients and truly complex cancer patients with pathologies that can really affect their function in unique ways. Um, the James Cancer Center is a massive uh, oncology referral center for the surrounding area, um, and we have a dedicated cancer rehab service at Dodd. Um, especially a very robust ortho onc service at the James. And so uh, lots of pretty fascinating uh, sarcomas and things that can erode joints, erode muscles and bones and provide some really interesting rehab challenges. Uh, but anything medically complex, we certainly see a lot of, we deal with transplants all the time. I can't, I've lost track of how many heart transplants I've taken care of, how many liver transplants I've taken care of. Um, and so, you know, uh, all of the, you know, kind of interesting, uh, like Jan Beret variants and, and CDIP, CIDP and, um, you know, stroke syndromes, really just a pretty wide variety. I think other things we have is the disorders of consciousness program uh, with our TBI um, group, as well as from an outpatient standpoint, a pretty robust intrathecal back with and pump program. Um, and then you'll see probably some of the weirdest EMGs ever at the VA, as well as um, in our clinics. Uh, so we see a lot of pathology from everything. Um, and then from the oncology standpoint, you know, we have a car for accredited cancer rehab um, uh, uh, rotation for our residents. So you'll see a lot of interesting and different cancers uh, with, especially with a connection to the James. Awesome, thank you very much, appreciate it. And then there was a question in the chat about um, Comlex versus step one and step two. Osteopathic students do not have to take um, step one and step two in order to apply for a program. We accept both, either or. And uh, sorry about this last slide, but I'm actually a DO, um, not an MD. <laughs> sorry, David. <laughs> that's, that's my bad. I, I even knew that, yet I put it there anyway. We are very open to osteopathic students. We also have a integrative medicine center that has um, an osteopathic physician that's very willing to have our residents uh, rotate with her as well. Any other questions? Uh, On the topic of the DO uh, aspects, are there opportunities for, uh, for kind of uh, not, even, not really in service, but like didactics about just to explain some of the OMM to any MDs that are on the service, just totally out of curiosity. Yeah, actually, one of our current PGY3s is uh, has created an osteopathic um, teaching curriculum for his colleagues. Um, he's also brought in his training table to um, do manipulation for his co-residents as part of his his contra contribution to wellness. Um, but we also have had a number of our osteopathic residents um, give grand rounds and their junior senior presentations on osteopathic medicine. And all of those are recorded for our residents to be able to see in the future. Um, I uh, do osteopath OMT in my clinics as well. And so um, both uh, allopathic and osteopathic residents will be able to watch that and do that as well. Thank you very much. 
Thank you so much to The Ohio State University for presenting this evening. Uh, we are happy to have you here. Um, you are totally welcome to stay and monitor the chat for a little bit longer as we get our next program started.